In the first few years of life, more than one million neural connections occur in the human brain every second. Now that number is mind-boggling, but not as mind-boggling as the three million internet connections that happen. The difference between a second in the baby's brain and a second on the internet is vast, however. The baby brain second builds up our individual cognitive health, whereas the internet second threatens to tear down collective intelligence regarding public health. It's all a matter of time. Americans have taken for granted their communal health, which continues to improve. Why is that so? Because we have a system that's in place that has worked very well. I like to call it the three Ps, press, policy, and public health. Let me explain. The press doesn't um, circulate information to the public until it's vetted the information. It does it relatively quickly, and it happens fast. When it comes to governments developing policy, our representatives actually review the information before they put it into law. It goes a little slower. And when it comes to public health, the process moves slower still, because the information has to be peer-reviewed to be sure it's safe for the public. This system, with its varying processing times, has protected us, making us any impulsive decisions about public health not happen so fast. Today, however, this system has been seriously disrupted by the internet and by social media. And we can see this from historical events. When Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, Americans learned about it in days, it took days. When JFK was assassinated, the news reached us within hours. Fast forward to 2001, when the Twin Towers were struck, we heard about it within minutes. And now, when something like this happens, <laughs> we hear about it in seconds. Time seems to be perpetually contracting, but we've known that time can do strange things. Way back in 1915, when Einstein put out his general theory of relativity, he unleashed it to the world. Now, Einstein's theory suggested that the only true constant, the speed of light, can mean that time can move faster or slower, depending upon how far above the Earth you are, how fast you're traveling. His theory was a turning point in scientific research. And it changed the way all Americans look at time and space and gravity. And this realization crystallized with the space race in the 1950s and 1960s against the Soviets. Einstein's theory provided a conceptual groundwork for the fields of quantum physics, black holes, and answers to the secrets of the universe. And just weeks ago, we saw the first photograph of a black hole. And yet, and yet, ironically, a survey done about a year ago showed that only 66% of college-age Americans are confident, definitely confident, that the world is not flat. Yes. Einstein's theory pivoted on time, on our basic unit of measurement. But expectations of how long something would take has shifted dramatically in your lifetime and surely in my lifetime. Before you were born, people would actually wait online for 10 minutes to deposit a paycheck at a bank. You would not tolerate that today. And yet, you would stand on a line for over a day to get the new Apple iPhone. Before you were born, people could go online only through a dial-up connection. And when you wanted to print a few pages, you'd push print on your dot matrix printer, no less, and you'd wait. You'd go grab a sandwich, come back. It took that long, seriously. But today, that seems like a colossal waste of time, and yet we spend three and a half hours on our devices every day, including at Versailles. The passage of time was so central to Einstein's thinking that he actually even used it to describe how his own mind worked. And time became the defining factor in our lives. Well, what is virality? You know, one of the most important words that we have today in the digital age actually is borrowed from medicine and public health, this virus. The digital definition there at the bottom pertains to the most dangerous aspect of a biological virus, its contagiousness, its rapid spread. In the 1918 influenza pandemic, it lasted only 15 months. It was the worst viral outbreak in modern history. It killed 50 to 100 million people. The rapid spread of norovirus on a cruise ship is a constant reminder of the dangers of being held captive to a virus. 
And though our methods of detecting viruses has improved, increased globalization is increasing our fear of deadly spread. The severe acute respiratory syndrome of SARS 2003 outbreak it killed about 770 people. It was small in comparison to the big picture. But the fear that went online was tremendous and panic. It was the first time in the 21st century that a health crisis was shaped and the public opinion was shaped by the internet. Six years later, in 2009-2010, the H1N1 influenza pandemic was responsible for an estimated 155,000 people who died worldwide. And it was the first time in the 21st century that a health scare was shaped, the public opinion was shaped by social media. And a year later, a movie, Contagion, 2011, dramatized the global spread of a deadly virus. This story was so scary that it was worse than any horror movie. But fortunately, viral diseases cannot reach as many people on Earth as fast as viral, uh, viral media. And much of what goes viral is actually funny. It's innocent. Chewbacca Mask Lady, I'm sure you've heard about, it, was watched more than 50 million times one day. And this Finn family, it's streaming in the billions today. But some, some is malicious. Pizzagate. Pizzagate is a debunked online conspiracy story claiming that the Clintons ran a pedophile ring in a Washington pizzeria basement. And the InfoWars conspiracy theorist Alex Jones spread on social media that no one died at Sandy Hook, that they were just actors. False and malicious media content plays on fears, which is nothing new in Western culture. The rise of Nazism in the 1930s exploited the fears through propaganda using the media at the time of film and, and, uh, and radio. And around the same time, in 1938, Orson Welles' The War of the Worlds was a, a radio broadcast, and it led me many Americans to believe that the Earth was being invaded by Martians, showing how people's fears can actually be manipulated. Now, history shows that the phenomenal power of a medium to disseminate misinformation, and there's a lot that's rolled up under this term. And even, even, when we can tell the information is false, we still imprint it in our memory, even if we hear it's wrong, because it's much easier than to critically analyze the content and realize it's inaccurate. Surprisingly, even if what you read and hear is blatantly false, like this, the information lives on in our memory. Welcome to the age of virality. For over a decade, business schools have been trying to study the science the science of why some things that go digital end up going viral. And from a public health standpoint, however, virality is dangerous, because once this information is out there, it's hard to pull it back in. Virality is endangering public health. With 80% of Americans getting their health information online, the viral spread of misinformation is a growing threat to public health. False information about Ebola or Zika virus or the anti-vaccination movement that we are seeing today have left many with the wrong ideas about science. So how did we get there? Well, let's return for a moment to the three Ps. There are reasons under each one of these Ps about why public health information that's inaccurate spreads more rapidly online than the facts. The common denominator is a loss of trust, trust in institutions. And this creates an ideal environment for misinformation to actually spread. And despite how virality can make us impatient, makes us impulsive, nature moves at its own speed. Nature takes time. But the public likes drama, and virality feeds on the drama and fuels it. Drama, however, is the last thing, the last thing that you want in public health because it can influence decisions that are important to our lives. So what's the challenge? In a social climate of rampant misinformation, we have to ask ourselves the question in public, public health, how do we immunize ourselves, protect ourselves from the damaging effects of virality? So let me put forth a proposal. Let's think of this challenge like an equation, like Einstein did. Now we need a constant in our equation, just like Einstein had the speed of light. And the constant that I see in the public health equation is our social center of gravity. So what do I mean by our social center of gravity? Well, it's no different 
than the laws of gravity. You cannot not believe in the law of gravity, just like you could profess not to believe in the efficacy of vaccinations. An earthquake-proof building, it can roll and it can move, but the center of gravity always falls within its base. And that's why the Tower of Pisa stands. It's the plumb line. But if you can push the center of gravity to the perimeter, and it goes to the outside, the building falls. If Einstein's theory of relativity moved science to the true center of our social center of gravity, virality is doing the opposite. Because virality is naturally indiscriminate when it comes to spreading content. It has pushed science to the margins. And when science is marginalized, our social center of gravity is no longer constant. It becomes a variable. And if everything, everything in our public health equation is a variable, we don't have public health anymore. So what do we do about the destructive effects of virality? That's the challenge I am offering you and your generation. Now, we know there's no going back. There's no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. But there's an old saying that the only way out is through. And I believe that the social media is the plausible solution. However, we need to maintain that social center of gravity so that we will be able to build on our foundation, the foundation that is the human condition. Now, social media gives health officials a way to communicate rapidly during a health crisis with the public. The challenge is discovering how to use social media to promote health literacy. And harmful viral content will have less of an effect on those who can actually figure out the difference between facts and opinions and falsehoods. But Einstein's wisdom, Einstein's wisdom offers us a caveat to the social media solution. The problem associated with, with virality stems from the fact that America's big tech media platforms were launched and have grown with no government regulation. Facebook and other platforms have been able to access, allow you to access millions of people on the planet, something that years ago was only the media and government and corporations could do. And these platforms unleash the power on the world with neither a plan nor a desire actually to control the abuses. We can't place the solution in the same people who brought us the problem and put us in this situation. Right now, viral communication has gotten ahead of government. And this wasn't the situation in years past. In fact, when radio was first started, FDR used it during the Depression to reach out to Americans during very difficult times. Government needs to get ahead of viral communication so that we can reach out and make sure it doesn't undermine public health. In a world that is seemingly ruled by what's the next baby shark, our challenge looks difficult. But we should remember that Einstein also struggled with harnessing the global force of his equation. In 1939, Einstein realized that the Germans were developing or could develop a, a nuclear weapon. And he went to Roosevelt and he said, the United States needs to do this first. And his suggestion led to the Manhattan Project that created the nuclear bombs that were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Still, Einstein was racked with guilt when he saw the nuclear arms rates that occurred during the Cold War. He knew that with E equals MC squared, you couldn't put the toothpaste back in the tube. So like Einstein, we know that both good and bad things come with discovery. We can control the harmful consequences of virality while enjoying the kind of virality that brought us baby shark. We can protect public health by striking a balance between the science-focused world of relativity and an emotion-driven world of virality. We just need the right equation. Thank you.